this fun little educational session today is going to be awesome because it's one of my favorite uh, past co-workers. Uh, his name That's is right. Tim Hill. He uh, also goes by Tennessee Tim. A lot of you may know him by that. Uh, him, a little history real quick. Him and I actually worked together and the first time I ever met Tim was over at Jetline. Uh, I had never met somebody, another salesperson that had just as much energy and <laughs> enthusiasm for the promo industry as much as I did, but Tim does. Uh, and so today we're actually going to have Tim talk a little bit about how to, how he and how you can rebrand yourself using your passion and social media. So Tim, I'm going to go ahead and have you take it away, man. All right, man. I appreciate this opportunity, Brandon. And it, it was fun meeting you years ago at Jetline. And, you know, I appreciate you saying I have a lot of passion for the industry because I've been in it since I was 10. I started very young, um, 1988. But, you know, being old, I still have the passion for it. Promo, is, it's such a fun industry. It's such a family industry. And that what you know made this even harder with this pandemic when things happened that I got laid off fast and hard right at the beginning. Evans, um, you know, let me go right away and very hard and fast. And it was a shock. And I, I've accustomed or attuned it to going through the stages of grief because, you know, you're in shock, you're in denial, you go through anger, you go through depression, you go through acceptance. And I think everybody's been doing that and everybody goes through it at different stages and there's no right or wrong way to do that. Um, but it's very much like that. I think I probably processed it really fast um, instead of way, maybe because it hit so hard or some people were furloughed or laid off and you thought you were coming back or would come back, but you had no ending. And, you know, ours was pretty, pretty abrupt. So I just said, well, we, I got to figure something out. So I went through those stages pretty quick. And it's a unique opportunity because you, you can spend some time in thought and in prayer, definitely work with your network, the people that you like uh, and know and trust and, and get their advice from friends, family, uh, Michelle, her father, everybody. And I, after all that thinking and prayer, I was getting the definite urge to leave promo, which was another shock and, and you know, freaking outness because that's all I've known. I mean, I've done that since 1988 and I didn't want to do that. So there's stress there that I'm arguing with God. No, I don't want to do that. And he's like, yeah, yeah, you should. When I finally said, okay, the stress went away, put the trust in, in myself, God, family, God first. Um, the next day, my friend Doug Sandler at Turnkey Podcast we were talking and he said, Hey, we want, we want to expand and, and we need a salesperson for podcasting. I'm like, I don't know podcasting. He said, well, I'll teach you podcasting. Um, so that's a learning curve there. It's a whole new industry for me to learn that. And uh, it did with the downtime allow me to also use that time to launch our own podcast, Connect Over Coffee, where we talk to independent roasters, um, do some coffee tech, caffeine and weirdness with my co-host Michelle Berkey who's also now my fiance and so it gave me time to do that as well but it was just it's a, it's a strange time where you have to rely on yourself rely on your friends and just you know take the opportunity that we have to to try something different um, and I've got some you know non-promo clients it's been going well starting to get the traction once I've learned that and stuff but then I'm I'm got a pivot to bring it back into promotional products as well. So, so I'm really, I left for a little bit, took a sabbatical maybe and trying to come back into it. But it, it you know, if you have any questions or anything, I've kind of rambled on there for a second, but um, it, it's been a unique, however many months. Um, it's hard to keep track of what day it is or what month it is. I lost track. I thought we were still in July the other day, but you know, it's been strange. So how about, how about you? How have you been in this whole situation? Oh, well, <laughs> uh, I have been fortunate enough that, um, you know, obviously I'm, I'm still with Promo Corner. And so, uh, right, right. you know, it's been tough uh, to watch a lot of my friends, you uh, especially, and, and, and so many more. But um, w one of the things that I've been excited to see is – people like you. And the reason I wanted you on this today was 
to kind of show people how you can take a negative situation, take your passion and create a new future for yourself. So first of all, how did you land? And you told, you just told the story on podcasting and how that kind of happened. It was through a friend and, and I felt like that was pretty fast. I mean, what was it? It did happen. Weeks after the layoff. uh, Yeah, it was, it was pretty quick. Um, And the way I met Doug or knew Doug is several years ago, he has a podcast called a nice, nice guys on business started listening to that and at some point he had a call to action or something where you called into the show or left a message on his his voicemail we connected we have a lot in common about the same age all that kind of stuff um became friends i was on his podcast last june not this past last june june before i'm um, talking about guatemala did a fundraising type thing so i've been a guest on his podcast as well so that's how we connected and like I said, we, we just became friends and he, he had the opportunity. And instead of, like I said, it, it was a hard decision. I, I kind of maybe glossed over it too easy, but I had a lot of struggle. I, I fought myself. I fought God. I fought fear and sc- I don't know anything else and sleepless nights. And I mean, it was, it was not an easy, easy decision. Um, but it seemed to, to be happening so fast and the door is opening that it was the it was the right way to do, and you just gotta you gotta trust that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What so what do you uh, what advice can you give to people to make that hard decision? How, how what did you, I know you you use the stages of grief, right? So yeah, and it was 100%. I mean especially with uh, a a career as long as yours was in one industry, um, and getting through that. But then, how did you take your new uh, your new approach or your new job with the podcasting and then create something with your passion. So kind of help, like help us kind of, how would everybody else who is going through this right now, because there are a ton of people inside Mm -hmm. our industry and outside of this industry, what kind of pointers can you give them to make that transition to, to tell themselves it's okay to take your passion and put it into another job, into another career. That's a good, good point. And you know, none of us, None of us like change. None of us do. Um, and that's exactly what this is for so many of us. And, and we all want to go back to the cliche new normal. And I, I don't know what that's going to be anymore. So just, you know, spend a lot of time in thought. If you've got something that you wanted to do that was maybe a side hustle right now or right back then, now you've got time to make it into your main hustle and just, you know, find what you're passionate about and and pursue that and talk to your friends talk to your neighbors the people you trust and get their advice and just and just embrace the change and you know jump off the cliff um that and it's it sounds too easy and i don't want to make it sound easy because it is hard and i did struggle struggle with it because like i said promo was that's where all my friends are traveling as much as we have or that we do most of my friends are in the industry so when i'm not traveling I, it's not like I had a core group of friends, which I do have friends. I don't want to make it sound that way. But, um, you know, the majority of the friends in the industry, and I was thinking I'm abandoning that. And it, it was it was scary. But once I decided to jump into it and embrace it, and it was it was still hard, learn something new, which was exciting. But ju- just embrace the change, but take the time to think about what you want to do, depending on where you are in life. You, you may have longer because you're younger than me or shorter because I'm older do what makes you happy and, and just go with that. That's, that's awesome. And so, I mean, one, one of the things, one of the things that I noticed about you, even, even, you know, you really started posting. So last week we had, we had Shannon Laredo and, and she is always posting motivational stuff on Facebook and on social media. You post a lot about coffee and you had before uh, all of this even started. And so it was really neat to, to kind of see you take your passion of coffee and turn it into something that is now a new career or a new path for you to head down. So did that passion for coffee make it easier, the transition easier because you already had a passion that you could talk about? Absolutely. I think it did because if, if you didn't, and I did for a few, few weeks, few days or whatever, you don't know what's going on and you kind of kind of wallow in it and you, you wonder what's going to happen or will I, you know, is there another job? And then as you said, the dominoes are falling, all our friends, it's all happening. At least when I did, you know, shift over to podcasting and do the, the coffee thing, it gave me, you know, 
it distracted me from from the despair, I guess. Um, and it and I did have the coffee set up, not set up, but you know I, I love coffee. Post about coffee, kind of already had a little you know base audience um, out there, so that when I did launch the coffee, there's already people listening. You know, and and we're having fun with that. We interview uh, local roasters. I've done one from Guatemala. Um, also one from Jamaica who have some type of social give back, which is important and talk about that. Then different things about coffee. Um, and Michelle, it's, she doesn't like coffee. She doesn't drink coffee. She likes the smell of coffee and likes coffee and desserts. Who doesn't? But so we have fun with that. She's a co-host of a coffee podcast and doesn't drink coffee at all. Um, so we, we banter about that. We leave the bloopers in at the end so you can, you know, you know, we don't want to be so slick and, and polished because, you know, it's just, we're having fun. So the bloopers are fun at the end. But it, it did help to have that passion or, you know, hobby, interest, whatever, to fall back on, to distract me from, mm -hmm. from everything else that was going on while I have a sip of coffee. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, me too. Yeah. Cheers, buddy. <laughs> uh, so one of the other things that I heard you kind of say is that, it, that making the transition into, an, into a new career even you even having the ease of having a passion that could make it the transition easier was you still felt like you were abandoning your old uh way of life or your old friends or your your old industry but how how has that transition and then being using social media how has that been how cool has that been to be able to grab your old industry and your friends that you felt like you were abandoning and transfer them over to your new story it has been fun and it, and it wasn't planned that way. You know, when I thought I'm leaving promo, I'm leaving promo, even though it hurt. Um, but as, as I learned more about podcasting and how it is a, a great medium or a channel to get information across to folks um, in a non contagious virus way, um, I never know where to look at the camera or the screen. It's crazy. <laughs> um, I don't know, I look like a moron at it. Uh, but but podcasting can do that because you can you can have the immediacy of it. Um, you can do a podcast today or do a recording today. Like Michelle, my girlfriend has another podcast, and she does a Facebook Live every morning, ten o'clock, edits it and has it live as a podcast by noon. So the immediacy is, is great. So when I started thinking about what podcasting can do and how it came back to me that the industry has changed, where the sales reps like me before, not going to the offices. They're not doing trade shows. They're not doing all of the things that we used to do, but they still needs to be done. How can podcasting do that? You know, how can it accomplish that, what a sales rep used to do, or at least supplement, not replace, but definitely supplement. So if, if you're at an office meeting, you could film this, like what we're doing, or film a line presentation, um, and then take out the audio, turn that into a podcast, and then everybody can see it on demand at their leisure if they miss the meeting. Um, or you can do a virtual trade show, like I know, you know, a promo show, there's a lot of people doing that. Um, but you, with the immediacy of it, if you have a new product, you can bam, you can put it out there and make a podcast out of it. And then you can repurpose that content using the social media, like you said, you can have it on a podcast, then you put it on your Facebook page, you put an audiogram on your, your Instagram page, you know, and just drive traffic to your podcast and get your information out there. And you can change it up every week. This week, we're talking about how to use this supplier's, you know, items for healthcare. Next week is real estate. Next week is auto, whatever category, whatever kitchen, whatever it seems to work into. And then the, you know, the distributors and, and customers can hear about that. You can have a rep chat. I just thought of that the, uh, the other day. You could have a rep in the you know, California area and one in the Northeast and one in the Southeast talk about what's working in those areas that you know, and have the cross communication, cross pollinization or whatever. And then distributors and customers hear that and take that out and use it as well. Um, and distributors could do that too, to their end users as well. They could talk about what they're doing, tell their story, and then here's how this item could be used for this industry, or here's a case history, or give the whole, you know, the whole lot, you know, bottom line of how it worked and what the return on investment was. So it's almost like you work in the podcast industry. I mean, you got all these <laughs> well, look, ideas, my man. <laughs> I have a new title too, podcastologist. Oh. I have the shirt swag to, to, to make it work. I love it. I've been looking at the camera so long. I didn't even get to check out the shirt. I love it, man. 
Hey, speaking of social media and your old industry, uh, I got uh, I got some Facebook comments here, and they're coming through like crazy. Uh -oh. Uh, oh, no. So we've got uh, uh, Teresa Danforth. She says, "Love your story, Tim, and your your testimony." Uh, she also says, um, "Thank you, Teresa. It's really cool that you took your passion for coffee uh, and God and uh, came up with a new job. So that's really cool." Uh, Jessica Gibbons Roush said, "He can't <laughs> get rid of us." <laughs> It's like the mafia and the Godfather. I, I thought I was out, and they brought me back in. That's right. No, and we then can't. over on the uh, on the promo show feed uh, on that Facebook uh, watch group over there, we got the Shannon Walsh Laredo chimes in and says, "Fiance Tim, she is your fiance. Stop saying girlfriend." I said fiance <laughs> once, and then I said girlfriend, and you know, it's it's new. It's only a couple of weeks old. I'm just, I'm trying. <laughs> I'm Look sorry. at that, man. You thought you left the industry and we're still, we're still chiming in, man. You can't, you can't leave. You can't leave. No, and it makes me happy. Like I said, that's where all my friends are. And if I can take something different and new, but still be where, where the friends are and where my passion is. Cause I, I love promotional products. I know how they work. I know they're, you know, such value. Then it's, I'm, I'm blessed. It's a total, total blessing. Exactly. No, I love it, man. Thank you so much. I mean, it's, it's uh, it's it's something that that social media has allowed us to do, has allowed us to be able to recreate ourselves and not have it be something so astronomically difficult. And you have to make fifty phone calls. You can do one social media post, and you're something different, right? And and not right. and not in a bad way, uh, right? So I mean, I'm pretty sure when you first posted that you had started your job at Turnkey, everybody was like. Well, now you got to tell me what you do, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was a plan to that. You know, you had the whole microphone and the, the you know, it happened, the unspeakable happened or however we put it back then. Um, but you got to do what you got to do and just embrace the change and have fun with it, you know. And, and have, still be have able you been to talk having fun? People. I mean, you, you told me a couple of your podcasts about, uh, you know, getting to talk to, to roasters and, and growers in other countries. Um, you know, how, how has this new job and this new way of living, how has that kind of expanded your fun, if you will? Well, it has opened me up in before, you know, to, to new people with clients of turnkey that, you know, there's, there's business coaches, there's real estate folks, talk to a lot of Canadians. Um, you know, they look like us, but they're different. That they're so happy though. Uh, but they're, fa <laughs> they're fantastic. But people all over the world, they're, um, there's a guy that's launching with us. His name um, is Uwe. He's in Germany. So, I mean, I'm talking to people all over the world now as, as well and helping them. That, and I've always been a helper. So it's nice to be able to help people get what they want, whatever their passion is, and, and launch it that way. And it's nice because at Turnkey, we have actually several different ways you can do it. We have a, a do-it-yourself online course, so like a seven-module course, that you can absolutely do it yourself. And we actually launched connect over coffee using that because I wanted to be able to say authentically, this course works. You can do it yourself hundred percent. Take mm -hmm. that course, launch podcast. If for whatever reason you get hung up, we have a level above that where we'll do it with you. So you do some of it. We do some of it, the editing, maybe do your intro, your outro, the music or, or whatever. And then a the level above that, if like, I just want to record my podcast, you take it. You know, we'll do it for you. So you can do it yourself. We'll do it with you or do it for you. So it's nice to be able to have those options um, throughout that way. Not too different from your old industry, man. Using promo to sell promo. You're using a podcast to sell podcasts. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> I love it. I and love there's it. a lot of fun, you know, and you can use with your podcast, you can use promo items to promote your podcast. You can use the earbuds or a phone charger or thing, you know, the Hirsch GoPro you mentioned earlier, shameless plug like there for Hirsch. Um, <laughs> but, um, you know, so there's tons of products within the industry you can use to promote the podcast to promote your products. You know, it's, it's just a domino effect. That's awesome. That's awesome, man. Hey, so well, go ahead and tell everybody uh, what, uh, how they can get a hold of you. Okay. Um, it's easy, Tim at turnkeypodcast.com. So we keep it simple on that. That's my uh, turnkey email. Tim at connectovercoffee.net if you're interested in coffee and, and stuff like that. And I can, you know, you can subscribe, listen to the podcast, have fun with that. 
but and you can go to turnkeypodcast.com to see the website wise to where um all the options there we have turnkey podcast on facebook instagram we're all all the places all the places that's awesome but i really appreciate this opportunity man it's been fun to to talk to you connect with you because you know we're all stuck and and not seeing everybody so it's nice to be able to reconnect with you man i appreciate it tim we always had so much fun out on the road and one of these days we'll get to uh we'll get to leave our houses again and uh and go out and have yeah. some fun uh and as as people who know you and me uh uh, I'm pretty sure you'll be able to find us at a local bar with probably Tito's or coffee in our hands. So or both. Got to figure out how to combine yeah, those. I've never done that before. <laughs> I haven't either. I don't know. Well, that's awesome. Trying to watch some football. Maybe we can watch some football. I don't want to go down that rabbit hole. So what no. I'm going to do hey, is I'm going to there will be one day. There will be one day in the fall if there is a season that you and I will will be at odds because A and M and Tennessee are playing this year in the conference only thing. So we'll be friendly but at odds <laughs> just yeah just watch the facebook banter it'll be great just just come on either tim's page or my page you'll see it all it'll be right there the two t's <laughs> well Texas thank A&M you so Tennessee. much again tim i oh, can't thank, thank you, you enough, Brandon. thank you so much thank and you. uh so that's gonna do it for express training bites today make sure you catch us next thursday